Hi guys, and welcome back to this masterclass tutorial series all about Lightroom Classic. Today, we're going to be going over the calibration tool that you can find within the develop panel of Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to this masterclass series. Now this is a five part series, so we have covered over other things in this series so far. We've gone over the basics panel, tone curve, we've gone over HSL, we've also gone over color grading. So if you wanna know any more information about those, make sure to go to the playlist you can find in the link in the description. But today is week five and we're going over the calibration tool. We're gonna to be going over what does it do? How does it actually work? And also how can you utilize it in your editing workflow to get better outcomes and also to be honest, create a unique style. I think the calibration tool is majorly underutilized. Firstly, a lot of people don't know what it actually does and why it exists, but also not a lot of people using it to its fullest advantage because once you fully understand and master the calibration tool, it will make you a way better photo editor. So let's get straight into it about the calibration tool. Right guys, before we go ahead and jump onto Lightroom, let's talk a little bit about the understanding of the calibration tool because a lot of people, when I speak to them about the calibration tool, they don't actually understand firstly why it exists, but also what it actually does fundamentally to your image. So calibration tool is broken down into three main sections and it's all to do with the channels you've got of your photo. Now all photos are made of three channels and these are your three main primary colors. So you've got red, green and blue. Think of them of like colored panes of glass. They've got transparency to them and allows color to bleed through. Now, if there's no color at all, it's obviously black. If all three channels are 100% transparent, AKA you can see straight through them, that is white. But when they go ahead slightly opaque, 50%, let's say, then it creates all the colors that you can see in the color spectrum. But the main thing what the calibration tool does is it controls what basically is what color. Let's take this color, for example. This is obviously blue. But then we go ahead, what, what is blue? Like blue might be different to you, might be different to me, might be different on a screen, might be different in real life. Blue is interpretive and that's with all colors. And that is where color science comes into play. You may have heard this in the photography industry. Maybe someone has said, oh, Canon has got the best color science or Fuji, I love their greens, for instance, or Sony, I don't really like their color science or along the lines of that. And that is all to do with how each brand interpolates what is what color, for example. So let's say this is Canon's blue, but next to it, let's go ahead and put Sony. Let's say this is what Sony thinks is blue. As you can see, there's a difference. Now, both of them are right and both of them are also wrong. Both of them are blue, but both of them are also different. So it depends on what you interpolate as blue is then what blue is. Now, it seems a bit confusing, uh, I must say, when I'd start like, like blue is blue, but it, it may make more sense when we go ahead into Lightroom. But that is the firm grasp of what the calibration tool does. It unifies color and it also tells the, the actual photo what is what color? Because maybe, for instance, you are going for a certain look, you're going for a certain color theme to it. Well, in that case, then you might want to change, Do you might want to change the interpolation of what is blue or what is green, for example. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom to actually practically show you how you can use this. Okay, so we are now in Lightroom and what I've done is I've actually made a, a quick kind of asset for us to actually use. Right, so let's go ahead and open up the calibration tool. So the calibration tool here is found right at the bottom on the right hand side once you've opened up your develop panel. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore shadows and tints, we're gonna leave that alone for the moment. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our red primaries, our green primaries, and our blue primaries. Now with that understanding in mind of what is what color, what we've got is our color wheel with our main primary colors as well as our secondary colors. We've got red, green, and blue. Then we've got magenta, yellow, and cyan. These are our primary and secondary colors. But then on the right hand side, I've duplicated them again. So we've got 100% red, 100% green, and 100% blue, but, and this is all to do with how colors are actually integrated. Yes, this is 100% red, but there is green and blue in it. Yes, this is 100% green, but there is red and blue inside it. And we can see that by going up to the top right-hand corner, you'll see it says R, 
G and B, and they've got a percentage. And this, when we hover over any section of the photo, this will actually show us how much or how many colors percentage wise is in each area. What it does is the calibration changes your color globally. So what it means is all colors are made up of these three channels. So changing the channel will change all of the colors at the same time, consistency, but globally. Unlike, for instance, the HSL or hue saturation lumens. That only changes it through color bands. So what we can do is go to the red primary here, and let's say we want to say, we, we know this is red, but let's, let's say we want to make the red more orangey red. So we go ahead and slide that hue over to the right hand side. As you can see, we have made that orange, but we go back to the color wheel, you can see we've also changed other colors as well. The purple, for example, or should we say magenta, has changed into more of a purple color. The green has become a little bit more saturated. The blue has lost a little bit of its intensity. And we can see how the color wheel has changed. Then if we go ahead and slide it over to the left-hand side, making those reds more magenta, Again, we can see, look at the yellow. It is almost disappeared. Look at the teal, it's got a lot more green in it. Look at that magenta, it's become a lot more vivid. That red has very much changed. And then, for instance, we bring it back to the middle, you can see it looks a lot more normal again. Then if we can go to the greens, we slide the greens over to the right-hand side. Again, those yellows are significantly reduced, but you've also noticed that everything looks a little bit less desaturated. Then if we go ahead and slide it back over to the left-hand side, Everything's become a lot more saturated, but we have lost that definition of the greens. Those greens have become a lot more kind of aquas. As you can see, the teals have been very suffered. They've reduced in saturation. And then the last thing we could do is we go to the blues here. We go ahead and slide those over to the right. As you can see, we have changed those blues into almost kind of magenta, more purpley colors. But look at the red. It's gone almost quite dark. And then, for instance, we've got the magentas over here. Again, look, look at those. They have almost changed color and as you can see the color wheel has lost a lot of its like the look at the yellow for example almost disappeared it looks almost like this green like they've almost copied and pasted the colors but they are significantly different let me go ahead and slide it over to the left again look at those oranges they have well, the yellow should we say they've almost completely changed to orange the blue has lost a lot of its a lot, lot, lot of its darkness it's a lot brighter for example so as you can see changing these color bands change the colors globally. Now, this is obviously in a controlled situation. We aren't, you know, this isn't a photo. This is kind of like an asset that I've made. So let's go ahead and actually do this to a photo to kind of see what it actually does. So let's go ahead over to this photo here. Now we use this photo in episode one, uh, which we were changing the exposure. So now let's go ahead and use the calibration tool. Now we've understood what the calibration tool does. Let's use it in a practical way. So let's go ahead to our reds first. Now, obviously there isn't a lot of reds in this photo. Predominantly they are green. But if we go ahead and change the red, let's say slide it over to the right, we are increasing the amount of blue that you can see, especially in the background. Then if we go ahead and slide it over to the left, those greens, it's all, the blues have almost completely disappeared. But what we've done is we've controlled the red primary. So how you, what colors, what red, green, and blue, how you want them to look like will interpolate what it ends up seeing within the photo. You can really change and manipulate the colors. Yes. You can do this using the HSL, but what's great about this is it changes it globally and consistency. It almost unifies certain colors. So let's say you love a teal and orange look. You're gonna be able to create a teal and orange look using the calibration tool over, for instance, using the hue saturation. It's gonna be a lot easier to do. Let's say I wanna make this blue, um, more of an orange teal look. I love that for landscape photos. Let's go get this hue, and if we go ahead and slide it over to the right, we've got more, more magenta and green, but if we slide it over to the left, as you can see, we have made those blues, we've changed them into teal, and we've taken those kind of greens and we've converted them into orange, creating this orange and teal look. Now, orange and teal is obviously a complementary color scheme, which a lot of people like. If we go ahead to our back to our color wheel here, you can see that obviously orange and teal, orange would sit obviously between red and yellow, and then uh, teal would sit in between cyan and blue, again, complementary on the color scheme, they're kind of opposites as it were, instead of analogous color scheme, which is where the colors are unified. You like to learn a little bit more about uh, kind of 
the overall color science and understanding color theory because it's a huge topic. Uh, I've actually made a video separate on my YouTube channel at one of my very first masterclasses. So go ahead and watch that. Link will be in the description. But that is the final understanding of how hue changes. But obviously it is one of two parts. You've also got saturation as well. Now saturation is a little bit easier to understand. Saturation controls the amount of color. So hue changes the type. Saturation changes the amount. So for instance, let's say we know red is far too strong in this particular image. What we can do is reduce that down. But as you can see, like what I was talking about previously, it affects all colors. It is a global change. It changes it on a pixel based level. Instead of hue, saturation, luminance, which is split up into color bands, eight in total, and it will only affect that small little slice, calibration, changes it globally. So reducing all of the saturation in the reds will kind of change sections of where you can see the color wheel. And again, what we can do, we do the same with green, go ahead and reduce the green. As you can see, it affects almost half of the color wheel. And even then it reduces large areas on the other side as well. And then what we can do is go to blue and reduce that as well. So as you can see, you can target specific parts of the color wheel and it creates a bit more of a graduated effect. So now we've got that understanding, let's go back to that photo. Now, as you can see, we, or I quite like this teal and orange look, but I would say the teal is too strong and I wanna bring more out of that orange. Make the orange more punchy, and bring back the power of that teal. So what should we do? We should obviously affect the reds, we should obviously affect the greens, and obviously the blues. So let's start off with the reds first. We wanna make the teal more strong. Now, we've, as we've looked on the color wheel, orange is a lot closer to red than it is cyan. So let's go to the saturation, and let's increase that like so. Then what we can do is go to greens. What we can do is decrease, see how that looks. Mm, I'm thinking boosting it a little bit. Then go to the blues, and we'll go ahead and reduce that down. And as you can see, I've gone for a little bit of a different look, but it's worked quite nicely. So we'll go for something like so. And as you can see, we've created this teal and orange look. So what I can do is just go to that calibration tool and do the before and do the after. And as you can see, it is a drastic change. So what you can do is use the calibration tool to either correct the colors. So let's say you're shooting on Canon and shooting on Nikon. You can shoot basically correct obviously, the color science. You can correct the color science or collaborate them, calibrate them so the colors are consistent across your entire, let's say, wedding gallery or event gallery. That's really important or you can go ahead and create your own custom look. So for instance, you've got a teal and orange look, you can replicate that in your photos and you can kind of unify a lot of the colors. And I must say, this is one of the most powerful tools that a lot of people underutilize. Now, don't worry if you're not getting the look straight away. It took me months, if not years, to actually understand fully how this particular tool works because there's a lot to it and you really have to understand color. But once you get to that point, color science becomes so much easier. And it's, it's, it's a term that a lot of people use that a lot of people don't understand. But now hopefully you do, and hopefully you can understand how it impacts your photo in a practical way. Here we go. Here is the before and here is the after. Brilliant, and there we go, guys. So hopefully that video made it easier to understand what the calibration tool actually does. And as you can see, it is a majorly underutilized tool. And hopefully you can now add it to your editing workflow, especially if you've got maybe a second shooter shooting on a different brand. You can now match the colors or match the calibration of each one of your photos to make a more consistent look, especially for instance, if you're doing wedding portraits or maybe you're in an event, for example, and you need those colors to be absolutely exact. Or for instance, maybe you want to create a unique style, or unique look that is very, very you, you can use that. You can basically use the calibration to do that for you. So as you can see, it is a really helpful tool to understand. And once you've mastered it, I must say the world is your oyster when it comes to photo editing. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it really does help me out. And if this video helped you out, make sure to give it a like. I must say it really, really helps me out as a photo YouTuber. And obviously, if you thought I missed anything, if you think you need, I need to add anything to this video, make sure to write it down in the comments below. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.